Hey, everybody. Boy, that was 32 seconds in. <laughs> we didn't say anything. Hey, y'all. How are you all? Thank you so much for joining me for the part two of my interview with the lovely Yvonne Mwale. Just to recap, many of you joined us yesterday when we first, hey Winnie, when we were talking to Yvonne. Yvonne Mwale is an artist that is based in Deutschland. She's a Zambian that's based in Deutschland and she was telling us one of the most compelling stories that I've I've ever heard one of the most heartbreaking stories I've ever heard. And, and I must tell you, you know, last night my wife was listening to the interview and my wife said something to me very profound. She said, after listening to Yvonne's story, I will never look at street kids the same again because Yvonne in a very compassionate way created this link between the public and street children. You know, prior to listening to Yvonne's story, I, and, and I'm guilty of this and I'm ashamed to admit this, but it's the truth. I, I sort of viewed street children as a nuisance. But after listening to Yvonne's story, she completely changed the way I view street children and, and people that struggle homeless uh, uh, citizens that struggle on the street. Her story is one of those stories that in my view has to be made into a, a movie or written, a, a written in book form because it is so compelling and it's so real. And I applaud Maureen, uh, not Maureen, I keep saying Maureen because I was talking to Maureen Lilanda a few days ago. Uh, Yvonne, Yvonne Mwale, her story is so compelling. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Hey there, bless you. So I'm waiting for uh, Yvonne. She's going to be joining us momentarily from Deutschland. Folks, please tell me, good afternoon, Godwin. How are you? Hope you're well. Let me, let me post some of your comments and questions. Cheryl, Cheryl says, we're so quick to judge. That's the problem. That's so true. You know, you look at someone and, and you just, I mean, for me, and honestly, again, I'm so ashamed to admit this, but prior to, to listening to Yvonne's story, I was one of those people that really felt that the, the street children were a nuisance and that they were there because of course, I knew that there was a component of negligence on their on the part of their parents. But I also thought I, I, I was misled into thinking that there was also a component of self-imposed poverty in some strange way. I, I used to think that. But but after listening to Yvonne's story, um, my view has completely changed. And my wife said that to me last night. She says, you know. After this, they will, I will never judge uh, our street citizens like, like that again. And, and thanks to you, Yvonne. Now, Yvonne, you need to jump on here real quick. She, she just sent me a, a message on WhatsApp saying that she's going to join me any moment now. She said she was ready. Let me just double check that. You're backstage? How are you backstage? No, I need, I need to see you on here, Yvonne. No, 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 Yvonne. Oh, here it is. Let me just tell her. No, Yvonne, you need to use the new, I've sent you a new email. So use the new one. Not Yesterday's is no good. You need to use the one I've just sent you here just now again. I've sent you a new email, so use the new one. Not Yesterday's is no good. You need to use the one I've just sent you here just now, again. Oh, the new one? Okay, we're using StreamYard. Um, 
let me just Okay, give me a, a second, guys. Once again, we're using StreamYard. StreamYard is a, a streaming service that I've been using now for a few weeks. This is the paid version. They do have a free version. And the way to, hello, Mbewe, Mr. Mbewe, or is it Mr. Or Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mbewe. Buona, hello to you. Hello to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Martin. Wow, waited for this. Glad I'm glued. Wonderful. Thank you for being with us. Uh, StreamYard, this is the, the paid version. They've got three tiers. They've got the free version. They've got a $20 a month version. And then they have the premier version, which is $39 per month. And what StreamYard does is that when you do subscribe, uh, you can they sort of charge you for the year, and then they give you a month free or something like that. So... The way to distinguish the free version from the paid version is that the free version has their logo up here, the StreamYard version, uh, a logo up here. Uh, and then you can put your own logo. All right, there she is. Bless her. Hey. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm fabulous. So nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Thank you so much for having me again. Absolutely. Now, Ifona, I must ask you, where are you? Is that your home? Yeah, this is in my studio right now. And, wow, what uh, a lovely home. Yeah, this is a studio downstairs. We have, it's just like a home studio, just next, right next to the kitchen and the living room. And this is where I get to produce my music from here. And it's oh, just fantastic. a simple home studio. And today I thought maybe, because I just saw somebody commenting yesterday and some people that were just sending messages Please, can you do a song? Can you do a song? Then I'm like, okay, then I have to chat with Mr. Simon. Maybe Absolutely. the interview, maybe I could, I could do one song. On the sure, end, that maybe. would be. Yeah, so I, I thought, that... okay, today, first, Monica Coffee, we know, you know, Pano and Ophiria. Yeah, so I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. We can do that. Now, Yvonne, I want us to, to, to pick up from where we left off yesterday. You know, it was like yeah. a cliffhanger. You really left us hanging and and so many people were sort of intrigued by the story and let me say on the outset also Yvonne that prior to talking to you I had no idea the vast experience of, of, of pain that you had gone through as a child I was really hearing it for the first time as you were telling it to us in real time and yeah, it, yeah. It, it it was so profound I must tell you that last night my wife was listening to the interview. She turned to me and I was just sharing this with the people on Facebook. My wife turned to me and she said, you know, after listening to Yvonne's story, I will never judge or look at street children the same again. Wow. Wow. That's, and, yeah. yeah. And, and it really affected us. And, and so I, I, again, I want to say to you, thank you for being open. Thank you for being honest. I know that it's a very painful place to visit mentally yeah. and emotionally. Yeah. But I tell you, you are changing lives. Your story is such a powerful testimony that it's amazing. So I'd like to pick up very quickly from where we left off. Uh, the, the last time I had asked you, the last question I asked you was, after having gone through all of that pain, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. how did you find yourself in Deutschland? How did that happen? In Deutschland, yeah. So after all that, and uh, that was now like years later, um, Uncle John's, John Skabanga, the one who's, uh, the one who used to be the band leader of uh, Bishop Band, one of the known bands there in Zambia. He told me that he had gotten contacted, you know, he had gotten contacted by a stranger who, who says that is from uh, Congo, but is based in Tanzania. And this man claims to be my father, you know? 
I me in my mind i'm thinking what do you mean what what are you talking about my father is dead you know so what are we talking about here and then he's like yeah he was explaining that he, he would really love to speak with you yeah i got really furious because this is something it's like you know for me in my mind i was like yeah maybe somebody's trying to play like a like a prank you know or something because you don't really joke when it comes to such things i i I forgot about my parents. Of course, we 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 had to put them to rest, and then just stranger people coming, you know, uh, claiming to be your parents. You know, that's that's something really big. But I had to just give him a chance, and then he had to connect us with this man on the phone. He had to put us on phone, and then we we had started talking, and then he was like, the first thing that he called me was actually the name that my mother. Nobody from outside knew about these names. We were given certain names that are they are connected to their tribe, their you know their roots from their Kasai, because he's a Kasai, you know the Kasai tribe. Yes. So he was the one who called me that name as Musasak. You know, Musasak. You know, I'm like the person who called me this name is not there and why is he calling me this name maybe this man might be telling me the truth you know so i think i would really love to just give him a chance and see if what he's telling is true you never know so he started explaining to me first it was about you know getting into emotions now emotional he cried i started crying on the phone because i'm hearing this story i'm like Yes, I had, I, I just heard some rumors from the family, you know, they were also talking, ah, oh, the man who died, he wasn't your father. You know, there were a lot of stories, but for me, it was really hard to believe all these kind of stories. Now, looking at what my family put me through, I got abused, uh, I was mistreated, I was tortured, physically tortured, you know, from my family. And I was like, yeah, maybe they're just trying to find a way to, to, to hate me, you know, so I couldn't believe what they were telling. And then... I just came to this point where I felt like I think it's it's high time that I should maybe try to accept because nobody has ever called me this. Anyway, also I had this feeling inside. I was always hoping and wishing that it might be true that I have I still have a father out there. Not that my father, my late father wasn't good enough, but you know, just missing this closure, you know, to have with somebody and I'm just this young girl. I missed my youth. I never really experienced that. I used, I, I missed every good thing at that time. My friends, they were enjoying their lives with their parents, dating, having boyfriends. I was working as a servant. I was abused. I was being treated like um, I was a slave. I've lived from homes to homes where people tortured me. They poured hot water on me. People spit on me, did all those kind of things. So for me, I was like, you know, I think I would really love to have somebody whom I can look up to and just call him as a father. So I gave him a chance. And then he started telling me the stories. Yeah, we ended things in a bad way with your mom. There was a time when I was in Zambia, you know, and uh, I had just come from Congo. I was with your mom for some years. And later on, we had even traveled with your mom to Congo. She was also in the Kasai land there with the people from there. And then... We, I had you. So with my mom, he told that he had two children, and that was supposed to be me and my brother, the one who, uh, I'm the youngest, I'm the last born. So I've got an elder brother, the same elder brother who was in boarding school that time, is still alive until today. And uh, so we're coming from the same father and same mom. So it was really strange. So we had- Can I stop our, you there? Yeah. Can mm -hmm. I stop you there for a moment, Yvonne, and ask you, uh, and this is something I didn't ask you yesterday. During those dark times mm -hmm. when you were going through this and your brother had been sent off to boarding school, was there ever a time that your brother reached out to you or tried to help you or try to be with you? Or was he also in a similar situation? Was he also uh, vulnerable? And, and Because, you know, through your pregnancy... Mm -hmm through that yeah. abuse, through the time when you went back to Chipata, then you went to the village. Where was your brother during those turbulent times? He was in the boarding school. He was in the boarding school, but also he was going through some similar things like me. And this is what these people did. They just had to put 
somebody in the boarding school they never they never send money like pocket money to help him my brother reached to this point where where he had um he had started selling his clothes personal uh, stuff just for him so that he could get food you know how in boarding school it is they're eating the similar food and uh you know it's also they have also challenges there you know like financially some other children they are getting support from their families but him nobody could even visit him you know he started selling clothes and of course through that he also went through so much so we didn't have contact and this time we still had phones right we, we did have phones yeah this time I, I don't know but we had no communication so my brother had no idea about me or how i was doing he never really um had a chance to communicate with me but i could just pray and feel because also i could feel his pain from far from a distance i knew that my brother was going through a lot even though he's in boarding school and then from there of course also he was mixing up with the wrong people we got abused also most of the times together but for him he instead he chose the easiest way for him to handle this instead mm -hmm. he turned into drinking you know he yeah, became which, so much addicted to alcohol he couldn't he couldn't take he all couldn't, he couldn't he, could, he couldn't yeah. cope he couldn't cope he couldn't cope mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it was really mm -hmm. difficult for him to take this so of course we didn't have contact he had his times the time he finished grade 12 at least luckily for him he had even a chance to finish grade 12. i was just this time in grade 7 you know i stopped from there not that i wanted to but i didn't have nobody to support me so by the time he was coming back since also he didn't have a home to go back to he started staying with his friends also my brother has got another sad strange story from his side he started sleeping also outside in the in taverns he didn't know where to go and we had no contact you know for some years he was just there i had also my life there struggling and it was really tough it was mm. so tough you know so yeah. tell me now so after this conversation you have now with your biological father mm -hmm. on the phone and he calls you a name that only your mother called you yeah. after that conversation did you make plans to meet physically exactly yes so after i spoke with him he told me you know if it's okay for you i would really really love for you to come and at this time my situation already started changing slowly because i had moved in uh with uncle john's in lusaka west from city after you know i had gotten settled now since this is a man who's given me a job in his band he's given me a home and he has accepted me you know to move in with my child so let me take this job since i want to sing i would sing in the band at this time he gave me some cover songs and then I went like, you know, I think it's time that I should start maybe making my movements, but I will soon. But it took a little bit while for me to go to Tanzania first. And what my dad used to do also as a caring man, I don't know this man, but he had started sending something, you know, money to support me. I didn't tell him everything. I didn't tell him everything, whatever I was going through there, because... I was, it was hard to speak. Today, I'm very strong to talk about it. I had stopped talking about my things, even though I'm telling in shortcuts, because if you get to hear the full, full story, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to mention some things, but it's a very long, twisted story, you know? So he told me, yeah, just come to Tanzania. Then after some time from Uncle John's, I had even found my own place somewhere in the, in a, uh, Mutendere, you know, Mutendere area there, even, mm. this, even though it's just a You found your own... Yeah, your, yeah your my, own, own, my, own, my own space. Mm. And then I had to just... I just wanted to be independent, you know. I've always been this person who always want to be looking after myself. And since I've lived in, I don't know, it's hard to count, 100 homes from with different families. From 90% uh, 90, uh, 90 or 100% from all these homes I've lived like 95 most people they abused me to be honest with you it was really tough it's a challenge to be kept by strangers you go through some stuff they make you do all sort of bad bad things they're making you using your clothes your clothes to wear to use it as a mop 
they are spitting in your food. They are doing all sorts of things, you know. So for me, I just told myself, you know, anyway, I've lived even in the drainages. I've slept outside, but I know that God is trying to tell me something here. I will be strong and I'm going to have to move. Whether I'll stay in a house where there's no electricity. I started sleeping on the floor in Tenderi there on my, uh, um, this uh, chitenge, you know, I used to use that as, as a mattress. So I would sleep there with my child. Then I got a uh, one plate cooker. That's how I started, you know, started buying fork, knife, plate, pot, all the important things and necessary things. I'm like, I don't care. I've, I've, slept, I've slept in horrible, even toilets outside. I've slept in the area or there in, in people's homes where they have toilets outside. So for me, this is even better. So let me just start my life. So at that time, at least I had started making a bit of money. Whenever we perform, I get something. And after communicating with my dad, he sent me something. I get food for my child. I get to buy real diapers for my child. My child used to wear um, um, uh, these plastic bags uh, from ShopRite, you know. It, my child used to wear that as a diaper. Sorry. It, it's... Um, it's a bit sad for me to speak about this, but it's uh, real. My child, that shop, shop right, plastic bag, the yellow one, that used to be the diaper for my child for some years. My mm. child's skin got affected and it got bent. No child should be able to go through that, but that's something that I could just afford at that time. And I told myself, you know, God is there. I'm young. I'm a child, but I'm raising a child. I'm, I'm, I'm also fragile. I never had time to... Uh. So know. anyway, just to cut that part out, I, know. I went I know. through that. I just found myself to just settle down. And then I had started selling everything that I had gotten from spoon sleeping on the floor. I started getting some things. There was a time when my life had become even better before I even moved to Tanzania. And that was in 2009, you know, 20, yeah, 2009, you know, it was really, that was like my first bigger steps. Like God decided to bring a good sight. I had people who looked too much down on me. I had people who didn't want to have anything to do with me. I used to sing. I've been in homes, I've been in people's studios. They just kept me there as, as their servant. And this is something that I really didn't like also about our own people. They look at you because you don't drive, because you look dirty. I used to walk barefooted. I didn't have shoes. They look at you, they judge you. You can only become important to someone as long as if they see you wearing something good. You're wearing something that looks shiny and oh nice and fancy that's when they can treat you right if you're wearing just something looks dirty that would put you down and they have no respect for you even in the studios that's what was happening of course we have all the superstars coming to the studios you see them driving wearing shiny stuff and i'm like oh i'm just looking like this strange girl carrying my baby all the time you know who are you they look at you like ah who is this girl? Just ask her to go, you know, we, we, we're here to record. And, uh, you know, she's just nothing. I had all these kind of treatments before. And then something bigger happened in 2009 when there was this nice organization uh, from France. It was, um, it's actually a project about empowering young musicians. I don't know whether you know about it. It's called Music Crossroads. You know, Music no, Crossroads. I'm, I'm, I've never heard of that. Tell yeah. us about it. So it's a good, it's, a, it's, it's an organization that empowers young musicians, like young talents, and they're all focusing on um, wild music, you know, let's say maybe like African music, this wild music, you know, so they're looking for younger musicians from different continents in Africa, you know, and then they could select them and put them together first, they make them compete in their own countries, and then they would make them compete and the first, uh, the one who gets this prize, as, a, as the winner now, they give you this opportunity now to uh, travel Europe. You go like in eight countries, you know, something like this. So that was the very first prize that we got as the Nyali. 
I had joined, we had formed the band called Nyali. So most people, they know me from the Nyali group. We had our good moments there. We had our good times because we just, we just, we had just won, you know, the interregional um, festival there with the final. We won, we took the first prize. And then for me, I started questioning myself. Why, why again are we supposed to, to do this? Like now, the thing is, for me in my, in my head, I'm, I'm still that same fragile child, the sad child who really thought that um, people one day wouldn't really respect you, you know, because you didn't really uh, finish your school and, and uh, they, they would always look down on you. And when I'm looking at myself, I only had two clothes. I didn't have anything. So how, what am I even going to do like in Europe? Why I've never been, I've never been even outside, you know, before. So I was really nervous when this came out, we performed, we did a good job. And then that's when we started traveling. We came to Europe. We stayed wow. for about eight months. No, now I want to just, I want to stop you there and ask you. Yeah. And of course I'm assuming, and I, I don't want to be presumptuous, but I'm assuming before this, you had never flown a plane before. Never, yeah. You'd yeah. never flown on a plane before. Tell me about that experience when you first got on the plane. Tell me about that first moment when the when the plane lifts yeah. off the ground and, and starts floating in the air. What did that feel like? To be honest with you, I felt like I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took, you know, even this is something that I do every day. I mean, not every day when I'm traveling, yeah. But exactly at that moment, I even took a Bible with me. <laughs> I took a Bible and I'm like, I have to fly with this Bible. I'll just put it right here, you know, because I know I've seen movies, you know, I've, I've always watched movies. And it's funny because I love watching scary thriller movies and things like that. And I see planes like crashing or the plane landed somewhere and then there's fire suddenly, you know, people, they are gossiping for air and stuff like that and so forth. Then I'm like, no, I think it's the time to start confessing even my sins. <laughs> I always confess. <laughs> I always confess my sins. I swear. I just confess my sins. I start to pray. I wasn't myself and I got sick. I said, no, I started plane. getting sick. Yeah. <laughs> I started vomiting and then in the plane they started giving me these bags for you know just to help me to vomit out i got sick and not just that kind of a simple sickness have you all had malaria before <laughs> yes i have yeah that feeling i always get that but even today i'm always getting sick you know i don't like flying. so so yeah. what you're saying is that even now when you fly you still are you feel unwell I get very sick, yes. Interesting, yeah. interesting. But now today, they have these pills, you know, this medication. It's a, like pills, they help you to relax your, mm -hmm. your, your nervous uh, system. They're going down. They just help you to relax. So mm -hmm. whenever I take this, I take it like an hour um, before we take off. So it just helps me to relax. And then it takes this uh, nervousness, this feeling that comes that... Uh, the anxiety. You feel like, yeah, the anxiety. You feel like throwing up. So this goes away. So at least I take that before. But if I don't do that, even on the boat, for example, if we're in a ferry somewhere, I always get this thing. I don't know. Even in the car. If we're traveling mm. for a long, long time, I get sick. I think yeah. it's just me. Well, it's, it's a common... the time, I confessed mm. all my sins. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, it's a common uh, human uh, response. Yeah. It's a common human experience. But Yvonne, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, listening even from yesterday, yeah. uh, when I listened to your testimony, there's a very, there's a common thread mm -hmm. in everything you, you say, you talk about God. G having gone through what you went through, mm -hmm. your, your faith, in God is so tangible. It's almost immeasurable because you would think that someone who goes through what you went through mm -hmm. would question the existence of God. But listening to you talk, your testimony validates or it, it cements who God is in your life. 
where did that come from? How, how did you, where did you get this unshake, unshaken faith that no matter what I'm going through, God is watching me? Where did you get that? You know, this started from the time on my dark times, on my dark, dark days, when during the time I was already outside, you know. In fact, the same first month after we had put my, my mother to rest, uh, these feelings just started coming. And also what helped me a lot is the book I told you about yesterday, the book of stories the Jehovah's book, uh, Jehovah's Witness book, The Watchtower. So that book helped me a lot. I read those stories, the story of Job, the story of um, Moses, you know, there were a lot of good, good stories. Mm. And somehow this book, I don't know, just spiritually, this book stayed with me. And mm. after some months, when we, after we had put my parents to rest, in fact, the same year, my other sister passed away. I forgot to mention. Um during in the in the in the on the streets there during that time it's very strange i know nobody would believe me but i've i've had visions like dreams sometimes it feels like they're dreams but also their visions i've had really weird dreams where i just see sudden images appearing just like a white stuff coming in front of my face and always it would encourage me to be mm. strong, to mm. be strong. And I don't know, it just started growing from the streets. And it's really funny because some people, when they look at me today, if I speak the way I'm speaking about it, it's a different image that I'm giving to them. They always judge me according to what I wear because I have also my own weird way of wearing things. I know I, I'm not into too much dresses. I always have this tomboy look most of the time, I, I just have my own style of, you know, dressing. So they just look at you. They're just judging you. They don't know what you have inside. They look at the tattoos. They look at some things. Me, for me, they are more deeper. They have meanings to me. But what I fail to, to do in front of people, I don't like to show it to people how my faith, how strong my faith is with God. Because the relationship, the, the relationship I have, it's between me and God. What I'm mm. trying to say, I'm not trying to say that it's wrong to do that. I know there are people who are just gifted in preaching. They they, they want to share the good news of God mm. and they want to show their faith. They want to share it to people so that people can see how good they are. But for some of us, we are different. I use myself in the spirit, the inner spirit that I have. And mm. I know that God has been always there for me. He spoke with me. I could hear voices. There were moments where I felt like I'm going a little bit insane. I'm just hearing voices telling me, do this. No, 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 don't do this. The moment I start feeling about something bad or having negative thoughts, I would hear like a voice telling me, Yvonne, don't do this. Stay calm. Stay calm and I know you will be strong. Always I've stayed with this with me and I've, I've always stayed with that. So it just helped me and for me, from that moment until today, I felt like, you know, it, God is the reason why I'm alive today. Three times I tried to take my life and not just mm. from talking, but I actually did it. I took some poisons. I did bad stuff to myself, you know, and every time I'm ending up um, back in the hospital alive, awake, and I'm always disappointed. I had people have been in, in the hospital back and forth, you know. Um, because, so I knew that at that time you, God you did that. Yeah. You did that because you wanted to escape the pain. Yes, the pain was too much for me. And that's the reason why now I know there must be a reason. Why didn't I die? I've taken uh, what you call this uh, boom. There was boom this time. Is boom still there? Is it still is there? Is it boom or doom? I think it's doom. doom. I think you mean no, doom. Doom, doom, boom is, right boom is the detergent. Exactly. Boom is the, the, the surf or saf, yeah. as we say in Zambia. Saf, saf yeah. e boom. The, but the, the doom, doom, I think, for yeah, doom is, doom is the pesticide. Yeah, yeah doom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And during that time, there were a lot of mosquitoes. So I had to get myself this doom, you know, and then I had to spray it on my foot. I, I remember that, okay, that was really, to be honest with you, 
I I would really love to speak to people who are always having thoughts of taking their lives because it's not really good. And when that hits you, believe me, when that moment comes, you are not yourself. You always feel heavy. There's something dark inside. In that moment, you are not thinking straight. Mm-hmm. Already you've gone somewhere far. You start looking at everything in a different way. Everything has changed. And that when that comes, you can't, you cannot help it. I've been in that place three times. And I saw that God, he saved me himself. You know, I'm always in the hospitals. I've, I've had problems with my stomach because I took so many things. I've had problems. But I knew that God created me for a purpose. I think he has a calling for me. And that's something I have Clearly. to hold on to. I might not have the the, the highest uh, um, educational uh, thing level, but... I feel like God brought me here for a reason. And I'm going to hold on to that. I have refused to take drugs. I have refused to take alcohol. I have refused to to sell my body for money because I'm going through this. I would rather wake. And always I used to, I'm always hearing that voice, always reminding me, pray, 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 pray. I know I'm not perfect. Like I never compare myself to Jesus Christ. He was the perfect. He was perfect. He wasn't having sins. But now for the fact that we all inherited sin, you know, we are not perfect. So there's always a room to make mistakes, no matter how much or how hard I try to be perfect or show people I stand in front of millions to preach the gospel. But we always have to accept that we all inherited sin. And we know where that sin comes from. So we can't be perfect, but we just have to to imitate Jesus Christ. We try to imitate, but also not just by proving, because there are a lot of Christians out there who are always trying to be Christians to impress or to make themselves look holy. But I'm not that kind of a person. If I want to speak about God, I would speak about God. I would pray. I would read. I would uh I have Bible studies also every every week. But people don't don't believe me if I say these things and it's true. So my mm. relationship with my God, it's very private. I, he knows what I feel, he knows where I go wrong, and he's the only one. He's the only one who saved me. And for me, that's why I always speak highly. You know, like I worship him a lot because he saved my life until today. Mm. I've he done did. a lot of bad things. I'm not an angel, but I also have I've done things that I'm not proud of. I've made mm. mistakes. You know, I, I, I'm just a human being, but God yeah. saved me. So this is why I get to speak about him like this year. Because, Amen. Yeah, Amen. yeah. So now now tell me, so you you know, you 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 start traveling. Mm-hmm. When you first went yeah. to Europe, did you first go with your son or did your son stay behind? No, my son stayed behind. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So I was going to ask you. So you know, here, here it is. Now you've got this new life. You're traveling mm-hmm. uh, all over Europe. Now, are yeah. you still traveling as a band? And and then, at what stage did you become a solo act? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So at this point, after we had finished our time in Europe, we had gotten back to Zambia. And then just like a year later, after we had gotten back to Zambia, um, I had maintained communicating with my father. So my father told me, yeah, you have to come. At that time, I was really also depressed. But before we even left in in 2009, for the first time, I I found another blessing, this one, Ngoma Award. Wow. Tell tell us about that award. (laughs) Tell us about that. Yeah. So this was in 2009. We had just gotten back from uh, Europe. So, you know, things that were happening really fast. I couldn't explain it. I don't know why, but we coming back from Europe and suddenly we're hearing about the Ngoma Awards and uh, nearly my group, we were called there as the guest um, uh, band to perform, you know, just to bring entertainment on stage while they're giving away these, you know, awards. So we were so happy because it's a big thing. We are going with my team. We are just so young, you know. And this time I was already like uh, uh, 19. Yes, yeah. So we are just so happy. And we're going there. You know, it, it, uh, it took place in, in in Copper Belt, you know. So this time I'm just going there. I'm like, we're going there with my band. We're going to perform our songs as the Miali. 
everything is good. So they started announcing the winners. They are welcoming people on stage. We're even happy. We did our performances. Then we did our performance. Then we, we we stayed back in the backstage. And then I'm hearing uh, the best, um, the best vo one of the best uh, upcoming vocalist. They're calling Yvonne Mwale. And then wow. Uh, wow. for me, my ears were a little bit blocked because in my mind, I'm like, oh, maybe there's another one who has my name. You know, I wasn't even paying too much attention. And my friends were like coming to me, hey, it's you, Yvonne Mwale. Where is Yvonne Mwale? And I'm like, you guys, no, no way. It's not possible because I haven't even released any solo, any single. My music, you won't even hear it on radio. There's nothing, nothing at all. Oh, come on, guys, it's a joke. No, my my friends, they start pulling me, taking me to, to, to you know, to the stage. Come, it's your time. And I'm like, you guys, I really looked stupid because I was almost pissing on myself, you know, honestly. <laughs> I think I even did had <laughs> to be that. Sorry. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was really terrible, but it was true. They had to push me, force me on stage, and I really looked like I was lost. I was just so lost. you, so you get the award. They give you the award, yes. you know, because we see this on television. The recipient yes. gets the award. The microphone yes. is right in front of you. What did you say? Yeah. I was really lost. I, I was so confused because I was even, um, I don't know what's the word when you start stuttering. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just. You were stuttering, um, stammering? Stammering, yeah? Mm hmm. You said stammering. You can say stuttering or stammering, yeah. Stammering, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, my name is Ivone again. I have to introduce myself because I don't have experience, you know? And yeah, uh, I love it. And I mm -hmm. would like to say thank you, God. And that's something else for God. Just say thank you, God, and thank you all, and stay blessed, and thank you. That's it, you know. And then and I you walked off. off. Yeah, yes, I went off, interesting. But I cried. I cried. That's because amazing. It was really a wonderful moment for me. It was like a dream. I'm like, wow. This now, is Yvonne. Yeah. Yvonne, tell. Let's for, fast forward to. How did you arrange for me to, to go to Tanzania? No, no. I was going to ask you about your because now you live you live in Deutschland. How did you yeah, make yeah. arrangements for your son to join you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think to answer this one, I have to go back a little bit to Tanzania because sure. that's where okay. everything now starts. Okay, From Tanzania. Uh, after I had left Zambia, I got my award, and this time I had made a decision now, it was a bigger one. I went like, okay, finally, I have to move to Tanzania, because my father is there. So I had moved to Tanzania there, I found my father in good health. Yeah, I had also some healthy challenges, maybe, but um, mm -hmm. he was alive, very much alive for the first time I saw him. It was really, like, really strange, because he is really my father, and we look so much alike. Really? Yeah really so much alike and then That's he amazing. me i decided to stay there and then me i'm this kind of a person when you put me in the desert yeah i could go in the desert i would definitely find water to drink i'm a person when i go in a new, That's powerful. In a new country yes in a new country i don't know people i don't speak swahili i'm like no 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 my father i'll stay with you for two months and i even told him if i'm i'm, I'm lucky enough even one month. So within two months, I started hunting for jobs. I don't like wasting time. I told him, please take me to the bands you've been playing with. You know, I just want to find my own space because so, I'm always scared wait a minute, to stay I, with I need me. to understand this. Mm -hmm. So your your biological father, yeah, was was also a musician, a musician. in a sense. Exactly. It's really a very good professional guitarist and That's a very good yeah. singer. Yeah. I Yvonne, this is what I find interesting that, you know, yeah. you know, that old saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I mean, yeah. here it is. Yeah. You had no contact with your father, your biological mm -hmm. father. And yet your talent was birthed out of his existence. I mean, yeah. you were you became a musician um, and your father, your biological father was was also an entertainer. I find that so, so amazing mm -hmm. and interesting. Mm. Yeah, I was so happy to, to meet him, and he explained to me the way he left, whatever was going on, but then I told him, you know what, I can't judge you. 
whatever happened there, it doesn't change whatever you did to mom. It doesn't change the fact that you were still my father. I want to give you a chance. I want to get to know you. Let's get connected. And he took me to his spots where he performed. He introduced me to some guys there. I joined the band. I started working. I started playing in, in five-star hotels, Ken Pisky, uh, Kirimanjaro, and uh, Johannesburg. There's a hotel called, called Johannesburg in Sinza. Uh, Lion. Wow. There's a co place called Sinza Lion in Tanzania, the slum. Wow. And then from there, I started working at this Johannesburg Hotel. I, I was performing one night, and that day, a man was invited to come and watch me. A certain man who owned the studio, he had his company there. And then I just, he just got invited to come and check, come and check out this chick. She looks like she's a foreigner. She's singing really good. And that day, that was the day I met my husband. It was my same husband that came, you know. That man was your husband. husband? That was my husband, yes. But this time, not yet. But I just came. He started yeah. uh, filming, you know, taking videos. And I got even annoyed a little bit because I'm trying to sing and I don't like people disturbing. <laughs> I like to, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to connect with my fans, you know, like I'm trying to focus you just with the phone on my face. I'm like, who is this guy, you know? This slim, tall, white guy. This is so annoying and he's very tall. <laughs> I said, okay. Uh, after singing and then he came to me he gave me his business card and i'm like before the thing is i've i've never i'm very scared I used to be scared talking to men like this because uh very very scared they're telling me no i have a studio please you have to come to my to my studio i like what you do maybe perhaps we could do something and i'm like okay I, okay before you give me this i don't want to um say a lot but i really pray that you're really serious if it if it means you have to do music with me then i'm gonna have to come then he asked for my number and then i had to give him my number he gave me his card he told me please call me tomorrow i can direct you you come to my place at the studio there i have my company there he's into animations graphic designing that's what he did you know he has a you have some cameras he did some film production whatever you know in his company there so after one week, I, I didn't call the next day because I didn't want to. I, I don't, I didn't try. Even now, it, it's hard to trust people that easily. I just went like, mm -mm, I don't want to be in problems. No, I won't call. In fact, I had to, I, I, I had to destroy this, the business card. I so got you rid tore, of it. Yeah, you I tore, tore up it. the business card. <laughs> yes, because I didn't want to, to, to find myself in horrible situations. You know, you can, you can never know what is coming, you know? Mm. And uh, after a week, I'm just getting a strange phone call. He's telling me, hi, you did call me. It's been a week now. I'm like, who is this? Yeah, I remember that guy was filming you. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, you didn't come. Why, what are you doing now? I'm like, ah, I'm just busy somewhere. Please come to the studio. And I'm like, okay, let me get on a bajaji. You know a bajaji? No, what is that? This, uh, it's, uh, it's actually an Indian car. It's, it's with three wheels, this motor. It's not oh, a motor, like it, a car it, with it, three tires. It, it, Mm, in yeah. Thailand, I think the, the Thai people call those tuk-tuks. Tuk-tuks, tuk -tuk? yes. Mm -hmm. tuk -tuk. <laughs> but so what, what do they do call them? Bajaji. What do they call them in, in uh, Tanzania? Bajaji. Bajaji. Yes, Bajaji. Okay. So I got mm -hmm. one. He told me, yeah, get a Bajaji or a taxi. And they're very funny. Uh, the first time I got into a Bajaji, I laughed the whole way. Because I laugh. Sometimes I laugh for no reason. I'm just laughing. Because it's not stable. It's just going, it's making you shaking. You can't talk, you're just shake, <laughs> shaking. And then we got directed, we go to this place. And then the first time it was like, oh, wow. So the studio, it's actually, yeah, this guy is straight, you know? He's not one of those people who are trying to take advantage of you, you know? He was very nice. And that's how our relationship started. We had become wow. best friends. We became wow. friends. We spent more time in the studio and it was just all about making music. Mm -hmm. I had my guitar. The thing is, I'm not a guitarist, like a good player, but I could only play two, three, four chords. From mm -hmm. four chords, I could play maybe two, six songs, same chords, but different songs. And then it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, there's a song that I used to do. It's called I Will Settle For. It's a, it has some reggae kind of vibe. And uh, he told me, yeah, we could record this. And the second one was a bit of a dancer. 
because I love to, I'm not a rapper, but I love to rap. I always convince myself, I want to be a rapper, but I'm not a good rapper. So right. he recorded me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he recorded me and like, oh, the song came out really good. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do an album. So that's how my journey started to uh, having like my solo. And I decided to go on solo. He asked me, do you have any wishes like on your name? You want to maintain your name as if one Well, I'm like, I want to keep it original. I'm not a person who's like giving me myself funny names. Like, no, my stage name is my real name. And since I love my father's name as Mwale, my father, the one who passed away, so you know, I want to embrace that and just keep it, just keep it natural. It's, anyway, my name, you know, Yvonne Mwale. Yeah. Yeah. Since that day, my journey began in East Africa, Tanzania. For the first time in my life, I had my first concert. It's a very nice, it's like more a tourist place, a concert place there. It's a bar, there's a lodge there, and uh, they're having a lot of white people there. I did my show. I did my show there, and we had more like 600 people coming to the concert, selling my tickets, having my record, album, people buying it was full inside people couldn't spend parking anywhere it started going viral there i started my career to be honest with you in tanzania after that a big thing happened when i did a collaboration with one of the biggest hip-hop guys in east africa feed q and we did a song called see it had marafiki it, it went viral then from there my career just started you know i started working hard we did our album together a year later after another year two years things started getting a bit more serious and then me and matthias started becoming now more like okay it's it's becoming now more than just a friendship you know mm -hmm. so uh, we started now dating you know got now a I, I need you i need to ask you mm -hmm. so it is you, you you're, you're going through this phase you're, yeah. you're making a transition into yeah. this solo sphere. And yeah. then, and then, you know, love starts to mm -hmm. show its, its beautiful self. At yeah. what point did you realize, you know what? I think I like this guy. Or yeah. was it one of those cases where he liked you first? When, mm -hmm. when did the chemistry, when did the fireworks start popping? <laughs> okay. So this ha actually happened when um, I would say things started happening naturally. We both somehow started liking each other. He studied, he studied. Because we could, you know, most of, sometimes it's dangerous, you know, to spend too much time together. Hours, yeah. a man in the room every day, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, not in a bad way, but also. Yeah, I know what you mean. Even in, even in a yeah. bad way, it's dangerous. But I know what you mean. Like it or not, yes. You start Attraction. having, yeah, the connection, the bond. You start feeling things for each other. Even though for me, I was so scared because I never really had this experience of dating a person who has a different color. But for me, our friendship became really different. I stopped even looking at the color. When I'm looking at him, we could speak even Swahili. I just started seeing a black person. We used to be funny. We would make jokes. We spend most of the time together. Wherever I go, he wants to come. If I'm going to work, and one thing that he really respected, this guy, the thing is I'm coming from a different background with a different culture. I'll never, this is just for me, I would never allow a man to buy me a drink. I buy a drink for a man. I never allowed a man to buy me a drink. So wherever we go, he's like, yeah, I want to get you to say no. I have my own money. Thank you. I buy you a drink. What are you drinking? What are you eating? So for him, he's like, oh, this is strange. You know, she's the one who is spending. Even when going to do shopping, the same money I worked for in the, in the, in the bars there where I'm performing, I would take my money. I go do shopping. I buy him clothes. I buy him shoes. For me, that's just my nature. And he was, for that, I think he was really impressed. And then, of course, he started now confessing, you know, I like you. I'm like, yeah, it's funny because also I like you, you know. Wow. So things wow. just started connecting themselves. We dated. We dated for a long time now, and things started even becoming more intense. Just suddenly, he just decided to propose, you know. Wow. 
Where, now, this, this is what I want to know. This is what yeah. I want to know. And please don't spare us any details. Tell me everything. Mm -hmm. Where did he propose? Where was mm -hmm. this? Where did he propose? And, and where was it? Yeah. It was actually somewhere at the beach. It was really nice. And that we, 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 yeah. At the beach. At the beach somewhere mm -hmm. in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. A wonderful evening, getting beaten by mosquitoes outside. <laughs> outside there was mosquitoes everywhere. We were having some mishkaki. You know mishkaki. No, what is mishkaki? <laughs> it's the meat. You know, there's uh, you there's chop uh sticks, uh the meat, mm -hmm. you know, on mm -hmm. the stick. We call it mishkaki. Yeah, okay. very tender, very soft, and you chew, they're really nice grilled. And uh, we were having something that night, and it was like another you know, thing is me, I don't come from a background of drinking too much. Yeah. So there yeah. was wine, and you know, like, oh, okay, maybe it's not a bad thing actually to try it. So we just started having a wonderful evening dinner. We're outside, and then he's telling me, you know what, you have to close your eyes. And I'm like, oh, okay, that doesn't sound really good, but though. I I'm really excited to see what's going to happen next. And then I just saw him. He was down on his knees. He's asking me to open my eyes. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, my okay. goodness. Okay. Is the word okay. you're looking for. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh -huh. goodness. So you said, oh, my goodness. And then? Yes. And then he's like, yeah, please, would you marry me? I'm like, oh, okay. Hmm. This is a lot to process. But, hey, you know what? You're my best friend. I have trusted you. And the reason why I really also liked him because he was this very humble guy. He has his rough time. He had his rough time you know, in his life. Yeah. He went yeah. through so much. And he was mm -hmm. in Tanzania for six years. Mm -hmm. You know, he was there longer than me. He had these bad experiences. And for me, we could really connect very, very well, not just because he was white, but also he had his, his bad side where he had it really rough. And for me, that's what I really liked. I would really love to be with somebody who had it also rough in order for us to connect, to understand each other very well. And uh, from there, things started growing. And then wow. I become pregnant. Wow. And then my child, our child was born in Tanzania. We had gotten married. And this time already I had my son, Moses. He grew mm -hmm. already this time. He was already like maybe uh, four, yeah, four or five, four there somewhere after our child was born and Amazing. then him himself he decided you know what i think i've lived longer enough in in tanzania i want to go back home i'm like oh why home being go back home? home being deutschland, deutschland. Mm -hmm. yes i want germany to go back home. yes germany yes i want to go back home I'm like okay but yeah don't you think you're gonna miss it here because also there we fell in love with the country tanzania became our home you know, wow. we had gotten news. And again, I have to leave my father there because my father also was happy. You know, it was just like, for me, things started looking so good. I don't want to lose this. But then I'm like, anyway, they say wherever you would go, it doesn't matter where you coming from or where you go. As long as they are people, they are humans, they are living there. You make it your home. Yes. You know? And the truth is that on this planet, everybody is like a visitor. We are all one. So I would go to Nigeria, UK, where, where, wherever, I don't know. It's my home because I'm a human being. You know, I'm not looking at too much of my color, but I would try to fit in. So that's how we ended up coming now here. We are here now. He became my manager. Now, you know, now I, I have to ask you this. Yeah. So uh, d during your, your trips through Europe, mm -hmm. you had never been to Germany? No. Was, was, so when you, no. when you accepted... No, Mm -hmm. From Danieli, we have been to Germany, yeah, but somewhere okay. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. so you 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 say yes to his proposal. Mm -hmm. You move to Germany with yeah. your with your son and your new baby. Yeah. Tell me about adjusting to German living. Mm -hmm. What what yeah. was your, you know, when you visit a new country, there's something called culture shock. You know, I'll give you my mm -hmm. culture shock. When I first went to America for the first time, mm -hmm. my culture shock was seeing so many cars in one big parking lot. <laughs> I, I couldn't yeah. believe that. I was thinking, yeah. how, how did they get so many cars in one parking lot? So when, yeah. you went, when you first went to Germany, 
what was the first culture shock you had when you got there? Mm -hmm. Okay, for me, it was actually the building, <laughs> the skyscrapers. <laughs> I actually got sick, you know, because was <laughs> you got sick just looking at them. Yeah, <laughs> Somebody had me a fire seen... about to throw up. This building's yeah. too tall. <laughs> looking at the buildings and my neck, I couldn't stop staring because, yeah, this is so strange. I'm like, this is really good. It's like in the movies, what we watch there. But also, I didn't like too much the snow. <laughs> that was a big shock for me. The thing is, I hate the cold because mm. also I have I've had pneumonia for a very long time. Mm. So I never I never remove my so my my socks, you know, my stockings. I've always kept them on because of the pneumonia that I had. I don't get along with the cold, so I didn't really like this at all. And I was really in shock with so many things. Like, mm, how am I even going to survive? Am I not going to die here? You know, spending for two or three minutes outside, you know the fingers, they're getting pink here. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it feels like you've, uh, like, hit very, like, something is burning. I cried. It was so embarrassing, but I cried right in front of his parents. I was crying the whole time. <laughs> said, no, I can't manage. No, 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 no. You know, but how are you managing this life of wearing gloves and the mm. scarf and the head sock and big shoes? I don't think I can manage this. I used to cry always, you know. So uh, how many how many years ago was this? How many years ago? Was was like this? seven, eight years ago. Yes. Now let's yeah. fast forward to today. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, your story is just so amazing. I'm I'm reading the comments here. People are, are saying your story needs to be a movie. Your story okay. needs to be a book because it yeah. is so compelling. Has anybody ever approached? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever? Have you ever mm -hmm. thought of writing your story or, or getting someone to write your story? Because, you know, these days, mm -hmm. Yvonne, yeah. anyone can write a book. Anybody. Anyone can write a book. It's true. Yeah. You, and you <laughs> don't have to physically write it. You can tell yeah. someone your story. There are people yeah. out there who, who, are, who are trained to do that. They're trained yeah. to write a book. All you have to do is just talk and tell your story. They fill in all the blanks. Have you ever thought of that? Yeah. My husband... Uh, he's always, uh, he has been always suggesting it. He's always like, you know, I feel like your story, because he knows more details. I've even kept some of the things. I didn't mention everything at all. Yeah, because of it was course. Like, it's too yeah. much. I feel like you should do something like, not just a movie, but a book. We could yeah. come up with a book. And then I told him, yeah, um, we could think about doing that, but it was also. I like, think you okay, should. Mm -hmm, if, he would if find on. somebody professional to write. Yeah. And already had started, I think, getting in contact with some professional, maybe writers from um, a, a Britain. You know, mm -hmm. like he wanted to look for some, but he was really, really professional when it comes to to writing. So like, mm -hmm. okay, we have to do this. I think also it's good if people they can know. Not that I'm proud of this story, but I, 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 for me myself, I didn't even, I, I didn't know that this story was even big, but I just had to endure and go through all these things. I didn't see how important it was, you know. No, but it's you're right. I we have to do that. It, it's yeah. a very important story, Yvonne, mm -hmm. and and I tell you, uh, you really do have to, you know, in your own time. The book will write itself, you know, in a mm -hmm. sense. And, and of course, yeah. it helps. It helps when you have a partner who sees the value of your story and the yeah. value of the story being told, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and I think it's really important. Yvonne, you and I could sit here and talk for hours, but, <laughs> but of course, we can't do that. But I want to, in conclusion, I, I want to say that. Thank you for this. Thank you for this interview. Thank you for your story. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you for your for your bravery. Thank you for your 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 resilience. You know, yeah. because your story, your your story has not only changed my life, it's changed my wife's life. Even today, I have to I have to tell you this. This this morning when I was driving from home to work, mm -hmm. I saw some street kids. I don't look at them the same way I looked at them. 
prior to talking to you. You know, yeah. I looked at one little girl. She's on the street near um, uh, the uh, what is it? The the SDA church. Yeah. On uh, yeah. yeah, there's a there's a little girl there with a baby, and mm. I immediately thought of you. And I said, I wonder what what her story is. And yeah. and for uh, never again will I judge a street child ever after yeah. listening yeah. to you. So for that, I say thank you. I say thank, no, you, thank you. you. I'm really thank humbled. You. To be honest, we wish you all the best, Yvonne. When are you coming to Zambia? You need to do a concert when you come here. Definitely. That's something that we, we are working on right now. Now, due to Corona, we have even delayed to do something, but we're planning to do like a tour. We're supposed to tour, to be on the tour last year. So unfortunately mm -hmm. for last year, we had to cancel all my 22 shows. And wow. um, now... The situation is looking up but a little bit now there have been some improvements even the, yeah. the cases of corona yeah. this side yeah. they've started uh, getting better so there might yeah. be a possibility that we should start now getting into concerts and uh, definitely this year i think i will be in zambia with my band so it's just now that we are making connections and now since people they are not so much familiar about my music you know it took time not it didn't take time it's just that also back home I'm not saying it in a negative way. Um, we have our own type of music that we listen to, you know, mm -hmm. of which also I have to complain about that if it's okay, because um, it's the same as um, when you have a child, for example, every day when you're giving your child bread, 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 the next day you try to give your child uh, chicken, the child would refuse and would see that as they're not used to that. So yes. I would also, uh, you know, especially the, the music promoters, uh, uh, DJs, you know, the, we have, I feel like we can change some few things, especially on how we can really like improve our music, you know, because every time we're always playing the same music, giving yeah. it to people and they are used to do that. So if you bring something new for them, they won't accept it. So yeah. for me, I feel like on that one, we still have to, to, to grow a little bit. And it has made it difficult even for some of us who are also having this different kind of music. Very mm -hmm. difficult there. So you find that most people, they don't even know us. But we've yeah. been there, you know. We've yeah. been there for a long time. How, yeah. how, would, you, how would you define your music? What, what, would you, what is your style of music? My style has different, I would say it's Afro, Afro soul, a bit of blues, some elements of blues and Afro some soul. jazz, Afro mm. soul, jazz, elements mm. of blues, you know, fusion kind of. Yes. Interesting. So now, before I let you go, are you able to give us a few bars, a few yeah. lines of a song yeah, yeah, that you definitely. can sing for us? So go ahead, Yvonne, serenade us. And, and and then take us out, girl. Go ahead. I hope next time we can talk again because I would, today I think it's enough, but next time I would speak about the music industry and, you know, sure. what sure. needs to be changed just to, you know, just to be on the positive side so that we can Absolutely. also put our country on the, on the map there because our friends, they are doing it, you know, from outside and we could do something, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, so go ahead. So what are you, what are you going to sing for us? What are you, you going to tell us? Tell us what you're going to sing for us and, and yeah. do a few lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I wanted to do is actually not just an acapella. I'm going to do one freestyling song, but I'm using my looping machine. It, you know what a looper is? It's a machine Yvonne, for the vocals. Yvonne, <laughs> I have no idea what a looping machine is, but okay. please explain it to me. <laughs> it's a machine. It's 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 a machine that loops the vocal or instrument. You know when okay. you, yeah yeah yeah. You can okay. it, it it has different harmonies. It makes you sound like there are a lot of people singing there. So you could actually right. perform without instrument. Okay, know? go ahead. All right, okay. loop it for us. Loop it. All right. So yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. But there's a lot of echo, though. Mm -hmm. That's the effect because it has more effects, different effects. Okay. But it's going to okay. get better. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. I'll leave it to you.
So what's the name of the song you're going to sing? Freestyling. For now, it's just freestyling. So I don't you're, know the you're, name. You're, free, you're freestyling. Mm -hmm. you're, so yes. there is no name. You're, you'll There's just no make name. up the words. you just make up the words? Just uh, jamming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wow. what I'm going to do right you now. You know who else does that? You know who else does that? Is Lil no. Wayne. Lil, Lil Wayne does that. Lil Wayne, when he raps, he doesn't write his music. He just freestyles. He just... So, so go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Freestyle for us, girl. Mm -hmm. So... So that's a kick, just to give me a guidance. A okay. kick. Yeah. Da, 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 Ooh. Ooh. 
That's amazing. So that whole that whole thing was was freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making amazing. up something and feeling good. Just amazing. Yeah, amazing. My <laughs> our, our audience yeah. loves it. Uh, really? You know, yes. Cheryl, yeah. Cheryl says beautiful. Um, you know, uh, uh, oh, oh, what is this? Musonda says the spirit of God is upon you. Um, Amen. Uh, Claire, Amen. Claire says wow. Uh, and uh, somebody's asking, says, is she Anamwale? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Well, Yvonne, mm -hmm. words fail me. There are no yeah, words in the so human much. vocabulary to describe, yeah. and to express just how much we are so proud of you. And thank God he mm -hmm. took you through the valley and took you to the mountaintop. And we thank love you, you girl. And we wish you all the very best. One last thing before we go. Mm -hmm. Just is there anything you'd like to say to, to your would-be fans right now on Facebook? Yeah. I would really like to say thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your love. And keep on supporting us. Keep on supporting me. And, of course, keep on praying. Also, staying positive. Don't get corona. Keep your distance and, of course, keep your hands also clean, safe. Clean, and, uh, yes. And I love you. You know, keep it clean. Keep everything clean so that you could stay healthy and also have the peace in your heart and learn how to spread some love to the world and humble yourselves and be kind. So those Amen. are my words to the people. Amen. And in case people, they want to get my music, this is how it looks like. This is my fourth album, by the way. Wow. Fantastic. So, so tell us. Tell us, tell us your your Facebook name, the name yeah, of your website. If you have a website, you know uh, how they can get your music. Tell us all of that. So you could actually get my music on uh, on all musical platforms. You know, like on iTunes, Spotify, on all musical platforms. You could actually even find Spotify. Everywhere, on Apple Music, Google Spotify. Play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now you're on Spotify as as Yvonne, right? Yvonne Mwale, yes. Yvonne Mwale. Let me let me just mm -hmm. let me I'm gonna search you right now. Yes. And and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and oh I see you. You see me, yeah. So my I music see is you there. I see you on Spotify. Yes. There you yeah, are. That's pretty so that's there you are. Is that you? So exactly. Yes. That's you. That's yeah, Yvonne Mwale. Yes, mm -hmm. on Spotify. Oh, so fantastic. if you want to check on my website, you can you could go to www.yvonnemoale.com and also wow. for the Facebook, you could find me if you type Yvonne Moale Music. Mm -hmm. And also on Instagram as well, you I go by the name of Yvonne Moale slash official. Why? So you could actually find me. And also if you go on Google, it's very uh -huh. easy. Yeah, right. just type in Yvonne Moale on Google, then uh -huh. you get all the information that you need. Definitely One, is. Mm -hmm. I got you. Hey, girl, we love you. We Thank love you. Thank you so much for having me. Love Thank you, you so me. much, too. Thank Stay you. Blessed God. And my regards to your wife and to your family. Stay blessed and always, yeah, stay positive and keep doing what you're doing because I see also you're doing a, an amazing job. Well, yes. thank you. Let's keep you, clean. <laughs> clean. It's a <laughs> it's a collaborative. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, hey, Bon. God bless you and, and love to your whole family. And we'll thank see you, you so when much. you come back to Zambia. Bye. Yeah. Well, thank you. Bye. Yeah.